Hi guys, uh, this is uh, Kieran Gibbons um, and I'm going to be shortly interviewing Geraint Goodrich uh, talking about his upcoming contest and about his recent victory uh, a very good victory uh, away from home um, Geraint's got a fight coming up now uh, the week after the next I believe and he's hoping to get a win um, to... Uh, well, hopefully a fight for a Welsh title, I believe. But we're going to try and get Geraint in on the conversation now. And um, he can tell us himself. So I'm just, just trying to bring Geraint into the conversation. Just to let you know, Geraint, this is the first time he's done a live interview, I believe. And he was a bit... He wasn't sure... Uh, how to come in the conversation so I'm just uh, if Garrett is there just uh, click on the link to accept the uh, accept joining the interview so just right now hopefully the sound will be okay sometimes the sound buffers a little bit but we'll try and work with it and there he is the Avon Valley Road Warrior <laughs> you love that one, keep to <laughs> So um I was just telling everyone there, Gay Right, I don't know if you could hear. Um you had an excellent win uh a few months back. Do you want to just tell us about that? Uh six weeks ago, was it? Yeah, you, you win your, your call, was it, I believe? Yeah, against um a guy called Paul Greenwich. Um he was four 0 Um he was going on to big things and um, he was on about English titles, blah, blah. I'd had um, a defeat um, against Lee Cutler. Um, things wasn't going well in training. Um, and I took a fight on a road as I did and I regret taking the fight really. Um, left me down. Um, I had a relationship breakdown. I ended up um, living in a caravan <laughs> down in Barryport which wasn't good. Um, Jamie Arthur come down and he said, what the hell is going on? Um, Got to thank Jamie a lot for, for doing that. Proper friend. Uh, he said, I'll coach you. He said, if you want to go to boxing, he said, you wanted to win a Welsh title and you either make a tidy go of it now or pack it in because he said, I'm not having you taking shots like I did against Lee Cutler. Got to be honest, didn't really want to be in the ring after the first time I went down. And, um, uh, that tested my character a lot. Um, that fight, a couple of days after, gutted, honest to God. And um, moving on from that, we had a 10-week camp. We seen the Paul Greenwich fight. We got off there about five weeks before. Um, went up there and beat him in every round. Took a fight to him. Um, but I felt that that loss learned me a lot against Cutler and things um things happened leading up to the fight um and made a different mindset i've always gone on a road to win but maybe i've not tidy camps you know um but for that i've just proved what i can do after um after a good camp i can go and beat them beat um, beaten fighters i've done it a few times and um <clears throat> my mindset is now i'm not losing again um i've got the home fight coming up and um I'm, I'm not losing again until I carry that title out of the ring for my boys. I promised uh, them the, the title and um, I'm going to do everything I can to get it. Yeah, I mean, just, just going back to the um, the uh, Greenwich fight, if that's how you pronounce his name. Um, yeah. When you're fighting away from home, it's notoriously difficult to get a fair decision. As I know, you've, you've found out in the past, at least... Um, I think at least two of your draws could possibly be wins on the road. And I mean, you like to do things extra difficult and you, you managed to even get a draw on your home show, which is not the way it normally works, but <laughs> you, you, come, you, know, I don't know. you always got to, you always got to do things the difficult way. Um, uh, as my mother would say, ask backwards this call. <laughs> well, yeah. um, but the fight in, in London against uh, Paul uh, Greenwich, um, yeah. At the end of the four rounds, did you feel confident you were going to get the decision? I remember going in after the third and uh, my little boy, um, all my boys, you know, they love the boxing, they, they follow me. 
And my boy said to me, which pissed me off a bit, because kids don't understand about going out to the road fighting. That's all they want to yeah. see. Like, to my fights are on YouTube. They show the, the, the kid, the friends in school, other kids. And it comes up, oh, my daddy's lost. So my little boy's in a van with me, Harrison. And he said, Daddy, when are you going to win? <laughs> I thought, yes. <laughs> so it was like somebody pulled my heart and it just threw out of the van. But um, I remember going in. I knew I won the first round because I said to Jamie when I went back to the corner, I'm one up, I'm one up. Yeah, he said, two up. They weren't really, like... He was saying things, but it were, he didn't really need to say much. I just knew I was going in it and I was going to win that fight in London. Nothing would stop me winning that because it was either win or or retire from boxing. Did you, did you feel you were going to get a fair decision off the, off the, the I presume, with the scoring ref? I don't think really. Um, I made, I'd done an interview after and I said that... Um, I lost the round there. I said in the interview, which was pretty funny, everybody in the away dress room was laughing. I said, I've lost the round there. I must have lost it in memory <laughs> services and across the coffin because I didn't, definitely didn't lose it in a fight. That's yeah. nothing, take nothing away from Paul Greenwich because, you know, respect any opponent you go in the ring with. So respect to him. But uh, I knew I hadn't lost the round, you know. Um, I don't think that he could have really given give the decision against me that night. I don't bloody hell. But I know it does happen in boxing. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I, I just think that, uh, you know, I don't know how the hell he didn't go down. I think another two rounds and I would have stopped him. But um, he was breathing heavy in the last one. I thought I'd done enough for the stoppage, but a tough guy. And he got through the the, the four rounds, you know. Um, on to your next fight. Um I mean, the general opinion is you need to probably get a couple of wins, at least a couple of wins on the bounce to get a shot to the Welsh title, which I know is your dream. You've told me that many times. Um, you're fighting on the 30th of November in Pontypool, I believe. Um, there are still tickets yeah. available if anyone wants to get, get tickets off Gay Right. Um, you're fighting uh, Lewis Van Pooch, um, who's a very experienced opponent. And he's probably a little bit like yourself in that... Um, he goes through, even though he, he probably would, would class himself as a journeyman, he's got a journeyman's record. He's got 113 losses, nine wins and two draws. But he, he's, he'll be in there looking to try and get a win, I think. This is not I an easy fight. Sure. I wasn't sure. I was fighting Pucci. I, I'm not, I wasn't sure the opponent, but I don't know uh, where it's coming from. I, I don't, well, I and, um, so how, how do you feel about uh, fighting Pucci? Yeah, well, my little fight anyone to get... Uh, to get the, the title shot, you know. I don't mind who it is. And as I said, I'm going in there to win. I'm, uh, and and unless I win and leading up to the title now, well, then that's, that's me done. Um, I'm training bloody two, three times most days. I've sort of put work on a back burner to be a full-time boxer and achieve my dream. Um, so I, I don't mind who it is I fight. Um, up in Pontypool. And then we go on to the next one. Uh, as it as it happens, you said I need to uh, string a few wins together. I seen Henry James yesterday in McDonald's. <laughs> I was at the flat right. I I won't say what Henry was at. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> I could hear someone beeping behind me and uh, why the fuck? Why the fuck did you beep back? He shouted. Oh, sorry, Ellen, I didn't realise it was you. But, well, uh, I think Henry's Hen actually retired now, isn't he? Henry James. Oh, is he? I, mean, I believe he has. Yeah, I, mean, I, I could be wrong on that, but I, I'm sure I read somewhere that he'd retired. He's finally yeah, had a good one. Kill about Henry. I know he had a string of losses. Um, then he had two wins. Then he had the Gavin Gwynn fight. So yeah. I believe I've had, I've done the hard, the hard bit now. I've gone up to 39th in Britain. Um, every fight's hard, but my next fight, I believe after that, is my title shot. I mean, I've done the six rounds on the road. I boxed boys. I boxed a boy called Jack Kilgainan. He's won the uh, Southern Area title just a couple of weeks ago. I boxed a boy, Mark Jeffers. I've got respect for all these guys, and they've all got respect for me because I still speak to them on Facebook, and they still message me. I'm so glad you turned it around. I boxed a boy called Bradley Ray. Them boys are all top 20 in Britain. Now, I've done the rounds with them, so I can't see why I shouldn't fight for the title now. I don't know. I've had 67 rounds as a professional boxer. No one round of that has been easy. 
My first fight, I had a boxer boy from Bristol. He come to win. He was six foot two. He was a bloody um, southpaw, Jacob Lucas. Yeah, Jacob. Um, <laughs> he come to win. So even my debut wasn't easy. Like, <laughs> and I've seen, I've, seen, I've seen boys having having um, fights and they've worked up to the title. And no disrespect to the Celtic kids, they, they've, they've, I've seen some boys come in and they're just going through the motions on the ropes. Now, I've always been in wars in the centre of the ring with boys who are going on to the, their aspirations are to win British titles. Linus Udofia, I spoke to Linus. I've got a lot of time for me stopping the body shot. Best I've been in with, I spoke to him because he was actually in the camp with Paul Greenwich. Spoke to him after. I said, where do you want to go? He said, I want to win the world title. Now, I've been in with him. Do you know what I mean? So I, think, I don't see why I don't see why the boxing ball and waiting for another win. I'm ranked thirty ninth in Britain now. Um without mentioning his name because we've had a lot of things. Jake Anthony, he's thirty fourth in Britain. I'm only six places behind him. Why don't he give me a shot? Or is well, the box record the different? I don't know. I, I just don't understand. Mean, box rec is, box rec is a, an unofficial um ranking system, so that doesn't really count. I mean it obviously counts for something, but it's not um, it's, it's, it's nothing yeah. official, but I, I am guessing what the border control would say is just the lack of wins. I suppose is what it comes down to from their point of view. I mean, I, I don't necessarily agree. I mean, I think if your fight, if, if it's a regional title, which the Welsh title is, if that's vacant and there's two boxers who want to fight for it, regardless of the records, let's fight. Like my my dream is to to box for the Welsh title. I was supposed to box Dan Barton, right? He done three wins. Yeah, so they sanctioned him. I've had three. I've had four draws, right? Two of them are debatable. So I, I, I believe that. Why ain't I, you know, why can't I box for it? I just really don't understand it. I got called into the the, the British Boxing Board and, and they said, oh, you know, what are you doing? I said, I'm going away to win, you know? I'm not a congratulations. I went away and beat the phone old guy. I felt a bit like, bloody hell. You know, should I be boxing? They 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 not give me no recognition. I, I'm going away. I'm and I think part of the problem is is that you you are a rarity in boxing in that there's not many boxers. Boxers either take two routes. They either go the, the potential contender route where they they sell tickets and they fight on home shows and build up a record and build up to a title, or they go down the the journeyman route where they fight on the road. Whereas you are actually you're going on the road, but you're going to win. And you're going yeah. to other people's backyards, taking tough fights, you know, I mean, on, the, on the wrong end of a couple of decisions. I mean, I've watched a couple of your fights that I thought should have been wins for yourself. That's at least two yeah. of them. There might actually be more than that. But you, you were a bit of a, an anomaly, if you like. I mean, people don't normally do things the way you do with, do the way you do. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, Boxers that's, don't normally yeah. go on the road looking to try and get the wins. They, they normally go on the road and put up a little bit of a fight and just collect their payday, whereas you were trying to do the opposite. You are trying to turn up, turn over the apple cart in other people's backyards. We, we had a bit of bad uh, earlier, as it goes. A boxer boy called Charlie Shane up in Kent. And after the fight, we had a chat and he'd made about 150 quid from the fight. And I obviously had my purse uh, to come home with. And uh, I said, oh, well done, mate, to respect. And it was a, clo a close fought thing. He won it by two points. I had two points taken off. I think it stuck your head in or whatever. <laughs> and he said, they told me it was a journeyman. He said, <laughs> a flipping crazy Welsh man in my face for four <laughs> rounds. <laughs> yeah, I had a journeyman of a fight now comes to win. I hate the word journeyman. Well, I don't hate it, you know, and, and I respect the journeyman. But uh, I hate being classed as a journeyman because... I, I like fighting. Uh, I'll fight to anybody. I'll like, go to win. I'll prove that. I'll do it in the backyard. I'll do it home. I'll do it whatever. As you say, life's tough. And, you know, I like to be tough as well. And I just go to, to get my to get my uh, my well deserves. And I'm sure my Welsh title is just around the corner. At least a shot, anyway. Just to cut in there, sorry, Gary. A quick message off uh, Davina Dixon, who's the mother of Tony Dixon, the Welsh Terrier. She says, um, Tony Dixon done the same. Don't give up and you will get where you want to go to slowly, slowly catchy monkey. So um, very inspirational, philosophical message there from Davina. Yeah, I got a lot of time for Tony and um, I think he was a, 
a bit hard done by a uh, uh, sparred oh, a lot of rounds definitely. for for the the fight he's just had out in Italy. I, I believe he won the fight. Um, I was watching it live on me and my boy and my girlfriend was watching it on uh, YouTube. Uh, not YouTube, but on a, a link, whatever, come up. Yeah. And I heard them saying one of the judges it, is Italian uh, and or two of them were Italian and one of them were French, was French. And I thought, shit, Dixon's going to have to knock him out to draw this. Yeah. <laughs> so... And uh, I just think he won that. And uh, I got a lot of respect for Tor, you know, and uh, I felt he was really hard done by it. I just thought I'd stick that in. Yeah, well, Boxing That's News, not... who always give a fair report to I me, mean, Boxing News, the British Boxing Magazine, don't necessarily always agree with, or they, if they think the British Boxer has lost, they'll say they thought the British Boxer has lost. But in this case, they they thought that Tony Dixon should have won that fight. Um, and yeah. it just shows how difficult it is for guys like yourself and Tony Similar fighters, how, how difficult there is away uh, winning away from home, which brings us up to um, we touched on your, your upcoming fight now against Pucci. If it is Pucci uh, next or week after next Saturday in Pontypool, um, one of the things you've got to do as a home fighter is sell tickets, and I believe oh, you've got an allocation of tickets to sell. So, yeah. um, if, if there is anyone watching this interview who wants to get tickets off you, I mean, how do they get in contact with you? I've got um, £35 standards, I've got a load left, and £55 ringsides. So if they just get in touch on any of my social media, um, there's a poster going around Facebook with my number on, so if they give a ring, uh, they can come and get them off me. Uh, that'll be brilliant. But I'm doing like a business package as well. Any business that buys over five ringsides, I'll get them uh, advertising throughout the camp. I mean, it's not easy. Um, I once told a joke if I wanted to be a salesman, I would have kept selling him dodgy <laughs> trainers. <laughs> but uh, I've got to do it. Uh, I want to. I want to get the, the fight as an home fighter, um, and I want to put myself in in a position to box for the Welsh title. So if anybody uh, will support me, um, I'd be so grateful of the support to to go and get my dream. Really, and I know it's always dangerous to look past the fight, but. Um... Presuming you win on the 30th in Pontypool. Um, don't start this, Pete. Don't start this off again. <laughs> I've, got, I've got to ask you. I've got to ask you. I've been walking the car in Swansea again. <laughs> um, I, I presume um, if you do fight for the Welsh title, the middleweight title, I presume it'll be Jay Gantney. He's the only other middleweight active at the moment. Uh, yeah. Well, and say, you know, I, just 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 on about um, bad decisions or close decisions. I mean, what, what did you think of Jig Anthony's fight with Morgan Jones? <laughs> you did laugh, put me on the spot, you know. <laughs> you're like, you're like, I'm like, buying a new spoon for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I you're, you're, a, you're a Welsh middleweight boxer, so I mean, your, your opinion is probably more valid than most people. So. What was your yeah, opinion on the fight? I watched it in uh, in my mum's. I mean, my mum watched it, believe it or not, and uh, my girlfriend was there. But um, I thought Jake won the first round, three rounds. I mean, he put Morgan off. I'm good sparring with Morgan now. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> I better not say too much. But, uh, <laughs> no, but, um, the first three rounds, I thought Jake won uh, comfortably in the second because he uh, he managed to put Morgan over. Morgan showed great durability getting back up. Um, and obviously, he, he, was, he went out against Anthony Fox. And it was, uh, you know, he, sh he showed he's tough. He's a tough character in that fight as well, because I was there ringside for that one. Um, but I, I think after that, he regrouped himself. And I think he jabbed Jake's head off uh, myself. And I think he nicked the win. And that's not by us, because... Back to the, the Jake Anthony thing. I know we had a bit of beef before, but I seen him up in Merth. I said, look, Jake, uh, it's, it's just it's just banter, you know? I know Richie Garner took it a bit far. But um, like, it's nothing against Jake. I just but thought that Morgan done enough with a job to win. I, I thought Jake run out, maybe putting him over in the second round might have been a bit of a downfall for him because he seemed to be looking for the big shot. 
and uh, G- I think Morgan outworked him. But boxing's all about opinions, same as football is. I think Morgan Jones is deservedly the Welsh super middleweight uh, champion. Deservedly, my opinion. Um, and I know that my, my mate Chris Ware, who I always say is, i got so much respect for Chris, uh, last box for the, the middleweight title at 11-7 in 2015. And it's been vacant. I, Chris have left it. And it's been vacant since. So why not now? Jay come down to 11-7. And let's get it on for the Welsh middleweight. You know? Definitely, and then, yeah. I mean, if it yeah, like, the, like yourself and Jake who want to fight for the title, I don't understand why the Welsh Area Council are so reluctant to allow you both to fight for it. So, I, I mean, I, I agree with you. And Morgan vacates the super middle and I win that and I'd be walking round Swansea saying I'm the double ch- <laughs> <laughs> double <laughs> champion of <winner. laughs> But I gotta tell you a quick story. Yeah, but oh I, well. I was in, I was I was in um, America recently in New York and I was travelling from one part to another part. It was about a seven hour journey. And I was listening to my podcast and I couldn't download any new podcast, so I found the old one of was yourself with James Lilly and Di Owen? Or about, oh, or about Richie, I don't remember the statement that Richie wrote out regarding oh, you and Andy yeah. Anthony. That's the longest podcast, darling. The Welsh <laughs> boxing. We had to read Richie's status out. It, uh, his letter out. I think it took us about three and a half hours from start to finish to read through it. <laughs> but um, <laughs> What Morgan has just said there, we sparring in a bit, champ. Yeah, I'll be at Mogs as soon as Kira leaves me go now. <laughs> no, no, we're just, but, just creating a bit of interest, just creating a bit of interest in it now. You're trying to get him wound up and sparring, you are, I think. <laughs> I, I told Richie Garner earlier that uh, I was going to be interviewing you, like, so he, he'd probably be, um, he's getting his big spoon out as well now to, uh, to stir. No, let's, let's call a spade a spade, yeah. We had it, you know. We had a couple of words. It's boxing. Do you know what I mean? Let's get, get it on. Richie manages Jake. Uh, I think it was all a bit stupid. All got, I was a bit peeved off with what happened with Dan Barton. They wouldn't leave me fight Jake. I put a 10-week camp in and I was disappointed. You see what happened to the s 4 c It could have happened to no one else. All that's to God. Um, but, yeah, uh, then it was a few words. I think what we should do, me and Jake, get it on for the, hopefully, the Welsh middleweight title. If not, you know, it don't happen. But if it does, and uh, we all, after we lose or draw, whichever one it is, we take the belt, we shake hands, and hey, there's no bloody hell. It's, it's, it's a sport at the end of the day. We're both in there. We're both warriors. We're both willing to fight each other. Let's use the best and let's take a belt of it because the middleweight uh, title... Isn't being uh, isn't being challenged for. I think it's a shame because as a Welsh boxer, I think everybody should should want to win the the, the Welsh title on, and steps on to bigger things. Same as my mate Gavin Gwynn uh, against got got uh, Cordina. <laughs> that was uh, yeah, that was great. a great fight. Gavin has worked his way. He's gone through the 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 Welsh roots and he, he's had his Welsh belt and then he's gone on to fight for the British. You know. So I think everybody should use the Welsh title as a stepping stone, and, and Wales is coming alive with boxing now. You've got some, you know, you've got some great boxers out there. So yeah, it's a good time to be a Welsh boxer. But I think everybody should want to win that, uh, you know, our own title. Right. I got. I'm just gonna. I don't know if you noticed now, but that's that's my YouTube channel, Given Talks Boxing, which I'll be putting this right. interview on once it's finished on Facebook. Um, yeah. which is, uh, these are. Uh, this hoodie was designed for you by um, Luke Mann, who's got a, an excellent company on, uh, which designs uh, soft uh, equipment like this. And also, the last time we did an interview like this, I interviewed Christian Tuzi. I was actually wearing the hat that um, that was also designed for me. Here's the hat here now. I just showed you. Peak cap. So, so I had the hat on. I'll put the hat back on now. And actually, somebody told me. I'll tell you what they told me now. They <laughs> picture, and they said, put this hat on, they reckon I look like Biggie Morris. <laughs> so what do you reckon? I, I think I'm no idea. The guy, uh, the guy who said that, I actually put it on a WhatsApp group I'm on. He said, I, I, he reckons I look like Biggie Morris with his hat on, so I'm not quite sure about that. I, uh, that's why I know where I'm 
I'll see you Friday. Let's get on <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, um, no, keep while you're on the, on the uh, subject of sponsors, I've obviously got uh, got a few that I'd like to mention who've got on board for this uh, Ponty Pool fight. Uh, were GCL Comms, um, Britain Ferry Construction, uh, South Wales Roofing, uh, Air Cladding Ponty Pool, and Emperor Leisure Ronda. So uh, I'd like to give them a mention uh, as well. Um, and obviously you've seen through my, uh, my social media that uh, in a relationship and uh, all, go- all going good. And I think us, uh, I've got to say thanks as well to Adele. She makes me fool all the time and she's been, uh, she's been brilliant uh, with, with helping me. And uh, she got a, a lot to thank for the, I've got a lot to thank her for, for the last win really, because it's, uh, it changed my mindset a bit as well, having somebody supporting you and by your side, like you know. So I can't leave without saying thanks to her because uh, she's been awesome, and uh, obviously Jamie Arthur for what he done pulling me away from the caravan. <laughs> I was like, I was like JJ Evans <laughs> living in my caravan. Go, <laughs> I think JJ's got it right, mate. <laughs> well, we'll I'll, uh, leave JJ speak for himself on our matter. Well, anyway, Geraint, um, good to talk to you, mate. Um, if anyone wants to buy tickets off Geraint for his next fight on the 30th of November in Pontypool, um, give Geraint a shout on social media. or uh, Well, you can contact me and I can pass on Geraint's number to you. Um, it's a full night of boxing. Um, some some really good talent on the card. Love up and come in fighters on the Welsh scene or on the card. Um, I'm right in saying, Geraint, that by buying a ticket off you for this fight really helps your, your career progress. It will actually be a massive help yeah. to you. Definitely. It's um it's massive for me to sell enough tickets because you've got to sell so many tickets to to be on the show. That's why I keep on. I know it probably bores some people seeing my ugly mug on the bloody <laughs> Facebook every day saying buy tickets off me. <laughs> I know it is hard with, with Christmas just around the corner. Um for it. But if you can help me out for this one, I'll be so grateful of it because, as I say, it um, it will step in stone me on to to my next shot, and hopefully my next shot is going to be a Welsh title. I know that uh, Jamie Sandgar was on about a show in March, uh, so maybe that could be the one that uh, I fight for the title on. Then not looking beyond this fight because, as I say, every fight only got to get clipped once per then. <laughs> <laughs> night, night, Kesara. I can't believe as well. Can you have mentioned my new haircut? You're a bit, you're a bit too far away from the screen. Like, I can't, can't really make out. You, you take a little. The curl, oh, the there. Curl, was, yeah. Give me down to Christian Pooses for the haircut, of him. Oh, fuck! Go ahead, and give me a skin there. You will. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're looking very, very trim and proper. Sharp. I reckon I'd be faster now. Like a US Marine jar head, is it? <laughs> you fucking boot <laughs> excuse the French <laughs> right, okay guys um, we're just going to finish up you know because uh, Morgan Jones is just going to give gear a tune in for speaking badly against him but, uh... <laughs> I didn't speak badly <laughs> here he goes here he goes <laughs> no no we're just going to finish up now um, if you want to see any more of these interviews oh, one question I got for you Gary sorry before we go if we've got two minutes um, I'm interested in your opinion on this. Um, yeah. I've recently put up an interview or a clip of an interview I did with Garvin Reese a few, about a month ago, two, say two, three months ago, where Garvin speaks about um, white collar boxing and licensed boxing, semi pro boxing. Yeah. Um, and I know in the past you've commented about some some of the dubious titles in <laughs> licensed boxing yeah. or white collar boxing. I've noticed you've had a bit of banter, shall we say, with a few different people online. Um, <laughs> you actually come from a white white collar boxing, white collar uh, white collar background yourself. So, I mean, what, what's your thoughts on the the white collar semi pro and license scene? I got I got a lot of respect for Gav. Um, if bloody Ali Bina, he's done a world champion. His opinion and my opinion is going to be different uh, on various things. Um, I don't really want to get into the argument. I know people are running shows to for, for living or whatever, you know, to earn a living or whatever they do. So I don't really want to go down the avenue of, you know, saying they should be doing this, should be doing that. 
I entered a white collar fight for a little girl with leukemia, uh, Chris Ware. It'd be a great story because he helped me spar for the Welsh title. It'd be a great story if I can uh, go from there to actually win a Welsh title. Uh, yeah. I think that's going to be a good story. Something like from white collar to Welsh title or something <laughs> yeah. will be in the paper, I expect. But yeah, I entered it, so it was a great stepping stone for me. Um, then I went on to the, the amateur code, uh, d- done my time in, and I turned over, you know. So it's all been very fast, but without white collar, who knows? Maybe, maybe I'd still be playing football. Hmm. I don't know, but, yeah. you know, I just, it, it, it gave me the... The opportunity. The, I loved, yeah, opportunity and give me incentive. I loved fighting uh, in the white collar so much. I thought I want to do this regular, and then... Yeah. You know, I think that's just where the fight did art comes in. But I haven't really got an opinion on it because everybody's opinion is going I'm to be sure different. I'm sure you have definitely got an opinion, Gary. Right? You've got an opinion on everything. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned now, Jamie. I've been told you. Well, here's opinion. a quick question then. <laughs> a quick question of um, Matthew Lee Driscoll. Ask Gary, right? what's the maddest thing he's seen in football? <laughs> <laughs> that was like a white collar. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, but there now, not the sharpest tool in the box, Matthew. Well, struggled. Keep the glass out of here, ain't it? Keep the glass out of here. <laughs> Matthew struggled to spell Oxo backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, we're in the warm up now. We warm it up. And I turns over. Somebody's kicked Matthew or whatever. So, he's toe to toe now with the middle of the warm up, fighting on the football field. <laughs> so, I've got the ball. I've picked the ball. I thought, this is a fucking warm up, boys. We're on the same team. Somebody said, good, he break it up. I said, it's nothing to do with me. <laughs> you keep me away from it. But, uh, yeah, that is the maddest thing I've seen on a football pitch. Matthew oh, yeah. just called to warm up with one of those teammates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't surprise you very much, but uh, there we are. All right, mate, um, so I believe as well, just you've got a, you're, on, you're on social media, you're on Facebook and Twitter, if people want to give you a follow and a... And a yeah, a my- um, is uh, Gary and Goodridge. My Twitter is obviously Gary and Goodridge, and my uh, I've got Gary Goodridge Pro Boxer, and um, just my my Facebook account has got five thousand friends. I think so. It's better just to follow the the Pro Boxer thing, and if you want tickets, get me that way. Or my number's on it, so give me a ring or contact Jamie Arthur uh, or Graham Mansfield for tickets. Uh, Graham's it down in Bridgend, my cousin who sponsors me and. Jamie you can get tickets as well, so yeah, all good. Jamie's Jim is Jamie's Jim is based uh, near Ponder of N. I'm right in saying, and you are of course based um, in Kama in the Am Valley. Yeah, yeah. The people in Pod, Pod, not Ponder of N. Ponder Preeve, Ponder Preeve. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> only, only a slight difference. Right. Anyway, I'll <laughs> leave you going. Uh, do your sparring with Morgan. Um, thanks, for, thanks for your time and um, good luck on the third year. Yeah, and thank you. Hopefully, you too, yeah. hopefully, the next interview will be uh, leading up to the Welsh title. And then we could really, we could really get the spoon out and start stirring things, then, can we? <laughs> you wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, man. All the best. 